So uh, there's really been a, a political revolution of sorts in Michigan that the Democratic Party is watching. You had uh, the first time in 40 years Democratic control of the state legislature there. How did all of this happen? <laughs> A lot of hard work, Lawrence. I got to tell you, we knew that with all of the threats to our democracy, to our fundamental freedoms, it was important that we fought like hell. And that's why we coalesced. We built a campaign. We stayed focused on the things that matter to people. And we won. And we didn't just win, but we won overwhelmingly and flipped both chambers of our legislature in Michigan. So as you see, some states rolling rights back, taking away freedoms. Michigan's moving in the opposite direction. And I'm really proud of that. The uh, on gun safety legislation, you did something that in most states is impossible at this point politically, that you had a horrible shooting uh, in the state and and there was a reaction to it. There was a, a governing reaction to it. What were you able to accomplish? So we finally got Michigan on the right side of some common sense gun policies. And it's simple things like background checks and secure storage law, as well as red flag laws. These are the things that the average person expects and wants to see. Um, we finally were able to get it done because I've got this new legislature and we stayed focused. We listened to people. And I think if that's your North Star, you're going to be successful. Um, but the people are telling us loud and clear. They expect their fundamental rights. They expect democracy and, and justice. And I think that's what why this moment is still so very real and and scary and why we've got to stay vigilant and continue to work to to protect these things. How uh, stable do you think the the Democratic position is, the party's position is in Michigan? I mean, it's not like uh, you have massive uh, vote winning margins uh, when, when you win these these elections. It, it seems like these things uh, could go the other way. Well, Michigan's still a very blue state, right? Or, I mean, it, sorry, a very purple state. Mm -hmm. We turned it blue in this last election, but no one should make any assumption that the fight is over. The fight continues. And that's why we've got to fight like hell. It's why the work that we're doing to create a pack to support candidates and causes that are on the front line of democracy, fightlikehellpack.org, is a way that we are working to ensure we hold on to these fundamental freedoms in Michigan, but also expand and support candidates who are on the front lines to protect this democracy, because we are in a very precarious moment in this country. So you are a reelected governor in Michigan, which means you're term limited to, to two terms there. Uh, you don't have a campaign to embark on on your own. Is this why you're dedicating uh, your political energies uh, to the Biden Harris campaign? Absolutely. You know, I am um, excited about supporting the Biden Harris campaign. We're created this this pact to ensure that we can replicate what we did in Michigan um, in 2024, but also beyond Michigan. The fight for these fundamental freedoms does not end at the state line. And that's precisely why supporting causes and candidates who are fighting to protect our elections and our democracy, who are fighting to hold on to fundamental freedoms, is so important, not just to Michiganers, but to all Americans. And that's why our work to create this fightlikehellpack.org is so important, because we made some great strides here in Michigan, but make no mistake, this is an unprecedented moment in American history, and we've got to continue to fight like hell to protect our to protect these rights. You know, I, I know that no one has ever run for governor of any state in this country thinking I'm running for a job that is so dangerous. People might be plotting to kidnap and murder me. And yet that happened to you as governor. Uh, what what do you say to people who, when they're considering possibly getting into elective office, that this is the new dynamic of what might be involved and, and, and they don't want to do it because of what they've seen happen to you? Well, I, I understand reticence to engage when you can see such horrible, not just rhetoric, but actions being taken against elected officials or their, sp their spouses or family members, as we saw with Paul Pelosi. And yet, 
It's that very reason that we can't turn away. We can't pull out. We can't look backwards. We've got to face forward, fight forward, and, and fight like hell. And we need good people to run for office. I'm always working to make sure that we are creating space and have real empowered representation at all tables at which I'm sitting. But we've got to encourage people to, to lean in here. And we have to hold hold people accountable. You know, it has been tough, and the rhetoric's gotten so ugly and scary in this country, but this isn't how it should be, and we can fix this, but we don't fix it by turning away. We fix it by leaning in and fighting. You know, in reading uh, Jennifer Palmieri's uh, profile of you, uh, what she seems to be reporting, her sense of it is, that in Michigan, yes, they're voting for your policies, but they are very much voting for the person. And uh, so it seems like uh, for the formula to work for Democrats elsewhere, uh, the Gretchen Whitmer-like candidate uh, is a very important part of the campaign. Well, I, I don't know about that, Lawrence. I could just tell you, you know, I'm just an ordinary person. I've got an extraordinary job. I'm serving in extraordinary times. I take very seriously the oath of office that I took um, to the Constitution, to fighting for the people that, that I serve in the state of Michigan. But, you know, Michiganers are like Americans everywhere, right? They work hard. They are try to do right by their family and their loved ones, and they expect their leaders to do the same. And that's why, as I think about the high stakes in this moment, the high stakes um, in this in this young democracy of ours, the high stakes in these fundamental rights, whether it's LGBTQ or or women's rights or people of color. When we speak together, we are the majority. We make a seat at the table for every person. And that's why, that's why this work is so important. I may not be on the, on the ballot next year, but that doesn't keep me from wanting to make sure that we are on the front lines and, and holding, holding the line on these fundamental freedoms. And, you know, I, I, I'd probably sound like a commercial, but that's why fightlikehellpack.org is the tool that I'm going to use to support candidates and causes. And I invite anyone who wants to stand with us um, to, to help, to chip in five bucks or whatever they can afford, because that's how we win. That's how we ensure that, that this democracy continues and is strengthened by um, the upcoming election. And there's just so much at stake. And I can't not think of my kids in all things that I do, from the way I treat people to the words that I use to the issues that I champion. And that's what it's all about for me. Will your PAC be supporting uh, the down ballot candidates, uh, like, for example, uh, state legislature, which is how you started, uh, and the offices other than just the presidential campaign? Yes, absolutely. So it's the first time I've had a federal PAC. Um, it gives us the ability to help candidates, whether they are congressional or state legislature or the Biden-Harris campaign um, and causes as well that are on the front lines. You know, there were there were a host of partners that were integral in terms of turnout and registration and persuasion. And so this work isn't done by one person or organization. It's got to be about all of us. And so anyone who fits that mold of a fight like hell candidate will benefit from the fightlikehellpack.org.